Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. It's our News Watch unit for the month of June, and it's also our All English unit for this month. So we're not going to let anybody speak any Chinese, and although we are going to sneak in a few Japanese words because there's a name in Japanese, so I don't know if that counts. You know, if you read Does a, a Japanese name, that does that mean count, we're not speaking、Tom. English? Yeah, I guess that doesn't count because we're actually using、uh, English、uh, pronunciation rules to pronounce a Japanese name, and we. Might have a Spanish name in the second story here.、Uh, I'm not quite sure what nationality her name is. Could be Hungarian because the news does come from Hungary there. Could but, be. But、uh, in any case, we've got a couple of news stories today. One is about tasting what you see on TV, which is interesting. And then we've also got something that has to do with dogs and their ability to understand languages. Isn't that fascinating? It is kind of fun. I know dogs are smart, so I'm not too surprised.、Uh, we're going to get started, guys, by reading through the two news stories, and then we'll be back. Taste the TV lets you taste what you see. A new type of sensory TV has recently been developed in Japan, called Taste the TV or TTTV for short. The device works by using ten containers that spray flavors onto a special hygienic lickable film that is then moved over the screen. TTTV was developed by Professor Miyashita Hōme from Meiji University. Miyashita believes his device could be used to train chefs remotely. It could also potentially provide consumers with tastes from around the world without them having to travel overseas. This could be especially beneficial during the global COVID-19 pandemic, which has disrupted many people's travel plans. Miyashita estimates that TTTV is likely to cost 875 U.S. dollars per device if put into commercial production. There's room for further development of the technology too. Miyashita has ideas for making a spray device that can add the taste of pizza or chocolate to toast. Miyashita's long-term motivation is to create a platform which allows flavors to be downloaded anytime and anywhere, in a similar fashion to how music is downloaded. Dogs might know more about languages than we think. Unbelievable as it might sound, new research from Hungary has established that dogs are able to recognize their owners' languages and can distinguish when someone is speaking in a language they're not familiar with. Laura Quaya, who conducted the study, performed brain scans on 18 trained dogs of various types. 16 of the dogs were used to Hungarian, and the other two were used to Spanish. Different areas of the dogs' brains were stimulated when different languages were spoken, depending on whether the language was familiar or not. Quaya was particularly interested to learn whether dogs have the intelligence. To make distinctions between languages in the same way as human infants, the research found the answer to be positive. Although older dogs and those with longer snouts saw the most similarities with humans, Quaya believes that older dogs are merely more used to hearing different languages. However, she is unsure why dogs with longer snouts are better at detecting differences between languages. The research does indicate, though, that all dogs have a certain ability to differentiate languages without training. All right, it's time for us to discuss the contents of today's lesson. The first story is about something called Taste the TV, and this particular. Uh, software program or this device or this、uh, technology lets you taste what you see. Wouldn't that be nice? Of course, I know you, Stephanie, like to watch cooking shows on TV. I do. It might be interesting to actually be able to smell and taste the food that you see being prepared on TV or from travel programs, and you can decide which country to go to based on what the food tastes like from your TV. Yeah, I read this and I thought,、mm, I'm not sure I want to lick something that I didn't actually prepare or put together.、Uh, it, it sounds kind of creepy that you're licking something, but、uh, it is kind of a, a cool idea. We've been talking about this for a long time. 
Uh, we talked about smell of vision for a long time,、uh, not so much taste of vision.、Uh, we're just making fun of the name television. We're switching out smell. If you can smell something on TV. I know that was a great April Fool's Day joke one year.、Uh, someone said, "Oh, we can now、uh, broadcast, and you can smell what we're cooking." And people were actually brainwashed into believing they were smelling the the eggs and the bacon and the coffee that the chef was cooking in the kitchen. I swear, people will believe anything if you tell them. If they want to believe, they will. So yeah, we've been working on some of these ideas for a while, but they were just kind of a dream. We didn't think we'd really get the technology for a while. Well, here's a smart gentleman in Japan, and he's come up with a new device, as Tom says, and it is allowing viewers to actually taste the TV, or、um, at least taste what they see is being done on screen.、Uh, hopefully, they use these for cooking shows. That would be really convenient、uh, for some of the、uh, chefs out there, or chef wannabes. If you're a wannabe. Uh, you have a dream of becoming that person or that kind of、uh, character one day.、Um, you know, maybe you're not very good at something. I'm a dancer wannabe. I want to be a dancer. So this particular technology、uh, is called TTTV, not KTV, folks. TTTV.、Um, we do this a lot in English, where we take the first letter of each word. And we turn it into an acronym. It's just faster to say most of the time. If you can actually pronounce it, if there's a vowel in it, we will pronounce it.、Uh, just because in English it's faster to us. We don't like to.、Uh, I was just going to say Chinese, Tom.、Mm. We don't like to spell things out too much. So this is a device that works、uh, by using ten containers that spray flavors onto lickable film. Uh, exactly. So it's a type of sensory TV. Sensory has to do with your senses: sight, smell, touch, taste, etc., etc. And it's being developed in Japan. And again, it's called TTTV for short. The full name is called Taste the TV. And it works by using ten containers that spray flavors onto a special hygienic lickable film that is then moved over the screen. So you've got、uh, ten different flavors of sprays here.、Uh, remember, a spray is a liquid that、uh, comes out in semi-gaseous form when you push the top of it.、Uh, of course,、uh, during the pandemic, of course, we're used to kind of de-sterilizing our hands by spraying alcohol on them, and we spray the alcohol on. Them sometimes it comes in little drops from those dispensers that also measure our temperature. But in this particular case, they're flavors that come in the form of a spray. And let's see, there are ten of them.、Mm-hmm. Uh, there are ten containers that have different flavors, I suppose, and different combinations. You can produce all sorts of different flavors. And if something's hygienic, that means it's safe. It has been scoured, it has been sterilized, and it should be okay. You won't get sick by licking this piece of film. Although I suppose each time you lick it, you need to de-sterilize it again. I think that w- that might ruin the flavor, so it might be a one lick and you're done.、Hmm. Uh, you may not be able to lick the film multiple times. We don't know.、Uh, you'll have to check this out. I tried to get online, and my computer's、uh, it just was too slow.、Uh, with the internet was a little slow this morning for me. So anyway,、um, I wanted to mention for some of you out there, you might go to a dictionary and. See See that hygienic is also pronounced hygienic. I'm with Tom. I say hygienic too, but they're both correct. So yeah, just very clean, very sanitary, very healthy.、Um, but, but like I said at the beginning, I don't know if I want to lick something that somebody else put together. So we'll see. I, of course, I do lick candy sometimes, don't I? With、mm. lollipops and things like that, and a popsicle. So this is a device again that has sprayed flavors, and then they ask the、uh, viewer to lick a film that is then moved over the screen. Okay, and so TTTV was developed by a fella in Japan, Professor Miyashita Homei from Meiji University. 
and、uh, Mi Miyashita San. Oh, I spoke Japanese there.、Uh -oh. I'm sorry.、Uh, Mr. Miyashita believes his device could be used to train chefs remotely. Again, if you're training chefs、uh, and they are in a location other than the actual kitchen, you could actually train them this way. Here, you know, mix these ingredients together, put it in the oven, and this is what it should taste like. So he thinks that this may be a good way to train chefs who are not in the actual kitchen or not at the cooking school. It could also potentially provide consumers with tastes from around the world without them having to travel overseas. So if you're thinking about traveling, say to Nigeria or someplace、mm -hmm. like that, and you're wondering about what the food tastes like, well, maybe you could、uh, use your TV and watch some documentary programs on fine Nigerian cooking, and、uh, then you'll get a sampling of what the food tastes like, and it might turn out that you actually find it to be quite wonderful, and you'll start. Making your reservations to fly to Nigeria、uh, right away. So indeed,、uh, you could use that to、uh, sample food from around the world without actually going to those places. And this could be especially beneficial during the global COVID-19 pandemic. Which hopefully is coming to an end here pretty soon, and this pandemic has disrupted many people's travel plans.、Uh, here we've got the verb to disrupt, which means to interrupt, to form a barrier,、uh, to cause a disturbance, to create problems for something. So again,、uh, you don't want your travel plans disrupted or interrupted because hey, we all want to travel and see the world. We do indeed. Disrupt here is one of our vocab words, as Tom said.、Uh, it just means to、um, maybe even destroy something, even temporarily.、Um, interrupt, disrupt the normal continuance of something. I know we've had our our electricity disrupted. Way too much for my liking.、Mm. I don't like my electricity to suddenly be turned off or have those blackouts, as we call them in English, blackouts. I hate that stuff. Well, moving on to the third paragraph, our、uh, professor or、uh, inventor, we could call him too, Miyashita, estimates that TTTV is likely to cost 875 U.S. dollars. Per device, if put into commercial production, so it sounds like they're not actually producing them in a factory for mass mass、uh, production yet.、Uh, they're not、uh, out on the market. Can't pick one up yet. What do you think about that price, Tom? You think that that is reasonable? Uh, it might be for some people who really want to know what different kinds of food tastes like in different parts of the world, or if you are a chef、uh, studying at Cordon Bleu, for example. But there's another pandemic in the future, and you can't go there. So maybe it would be useful for people、uh, training to be a chef or a pastry chef or whatever. So yeah, it kind of depends on the person. I would not spend this kind of money myself, but because、uh, I'm not really a great connoisseur of、uh, fine food, you know. So maybe some people would like this. Okay, so it says there's room for further development of the technology too. They're not done. Remember, we told you there are ten containers that spray these flavors onto the lickable film. So he's got some ideas for making a spray device that can add the taste of pizza or chocolate to toast. Yeah, I'm not really into those flavors on toast. I like my butter and jam. Thank you very much. But a lot of people might、uh, find that appealing. Remember, toast, guys, is not a, a loaf of bread. If we say toast, it means it's been baked or toasted in a toaster.、Mm. So many people here say toast if they see a loaf of bread that's sliced. That's just sliced bread. Right, toasting is actually a verb. It means to actually heat something up and make it turn kind of brown, crispy. So it is an important difference there. And yeah, I guess if you、uh, are lazy and you don't want to have butter or jam on your toast and you want a different kind of flavor, this might be something you would consider. And Mia Shita's long-term motivation is to create a platform which allows flavors to be downloaded anytime and anywhere in a similar fashion to how music is downloaded.、Mm. So that's his. Motivation, his long-term motivation.、Uh, your motivation, of course, is、uh, the reason you do something,、uh, the reason you get up for、uh, work in the morning. Your motivation is maybe to head to the office and to get a promotion and make more money and stuff like that.、Uh, you might be motivated to do all sorts of things. And what he wants to do is make these flavors downloadable,、cool. uh, similar to how we download music. 
Sounds like he's got some major plans in store, so we'll have to wait and see what happens. In the meantime, you can check it out.、Uh, go online and、uh, just look up、uh, TTTV, and things will pop up for you. That's what happened with me. We are going to take a short break. There's no Chinese teacher, but we need a break anyway. But we'll be back to talk about the next story after that. Okay, welcome back to our program. Now we're going to talk about dogs, and they might know more about languages than we think. Of course, a lot of people love their dogs, and they are pretty much convinced that the dogs understand everything that you're saying. Oh yes, my dog Coco understands everything I say. She's so smart. Well, I guess there's some kind of scientific、um, backing for that claim. I don't think they understand individual words. You can't sit down and talk about philosophy with a poodle, of course. But you know, they understand things like "come here," "let's go for a walk," "here's some food," "go to sleep." Yeah, they might understand that stuff. My sister has a funny dog that eats anything it can find, and even her kids will walk around. And they're they're small, so they're closer to the floor, like the dog. If they're holding a piece of toast, he'll just grab it. <laughs> if they、mm. don't, if they're not eating it, he takes it. So yeah, he understands when he understands. No. Don't eat that. So all our bo- all our dogs、uh, get to know us, I think, and understand what we're trying to say. But yeah, you can't discuss philosophy w- yet with them, and they can't read either. So there.、Mm. So unbelievable as it might sound, and it might really sound like, oh, how can that be true? There's new research from the country of Hungary. Um, and it's established that dogs are able to recognize their owners' languages, and can distinguish when someone is speaking a language they're not familiar with. I remember the first time as a kid, I heard someone、uh, speaking a different language to their dog, and I thought, "Wow, how does that dog understand Spanish? That's crazy!" And then I got here, and I thought, "Oh, dogs understand Chinese too."、Um, not really thinking too much about it; it's just kind of fun. So dogs are smart. We love them.、Um, and there's someone who wanted to do some research using dogs and discover if they、um, had similar intelligence abilities to little human infants or babies. So if you establish something, it says here they establish that dogs are able to recognize their owners' languages. If you establish something, it just means you're、um, you're saying something's true because you have discovered facts that show it's true. So she did research, and from those facts, the research that she gathered, she was able to say, "Hey, dogs can recognize their owners' languages." At least they can recognize the language that the master is speaking as a particular system of speech,、uh, not necessarily understanding all the words. So again, that might sound unbelievable, but yes, indeed, this research has established that dogs can recognize their owners' languages as opposed as opposed to someone who's speaking a different language. So to, to distinguish between A and B means to be able to tell the difference between something or to be to be able to identify. Uh, different sorts of things. So, of course,、uh, here in Taiwan,、uh, not many people speak Spanish or Portuguese or Italian, but they are similar languages、mm. in that they are Romance languages. But、uh, some people may be able to distinguish between those languages. Well, I don't speak Spanish, but I can tell that that person is speaking Spanish, and I can tell that that person is speaking Italian, even though I don't understand what they're saying. Yeah, we were talking about chefs earlier. If you're a really good chef, you are able to distinguish between high quality ingredients and cheaper ingredients,、um, but not always. So, yeah,、um, these dogs. She was able to establish that they can distinguish or tell the difference、uh, between languages that they know and those they don't. Now, our researcher is named Laura Quaya. That's how I'm saying her last name. We don't know how she says it. So this uh this prof- professor, I, I don't know if she's a professor. She's just someone who did some research.、Um, she conducted the study. If you conduct a study, you organize it, you carry it out, and it's kind of a task that you're、uh, taking on. You can be a conductor, 
and actually stand in front of an orchestra or a band or a choral choral group and wave your arms or your baton, that little、uh, stick piece of wood that they hold in their hand. You can be a conductor. You can conduct yourself in a particular way, which just refers to how you're behaving.、Uh, you need to conduct yourself better, young man.、Uh, my parents would use that word in our family.、Um, it's more formal, I think. Then you need to you need to behave yourself.、Mm. Um, you need to conduct yourself with with. Elegance and grace.、Um, she also did some brain scans. Uh huh. If you do a brain scan, you're doing some sort of medical test, and you use a machine, and it sends a beam of、uh, X-rays into someone's body, and it can be in your brain, it could be over other parts of your body, and it comes back with a picture that helps your doctor to kind of figure out what's going on. Uh, indeed, and these were trained dogs.、Uh, they can do certain tricks, I suppose. They can sit, they can shake paws, and stuff like that. They can fetch the stick or whatever. Roll over.、Uh, roll over too. I'm not sure they were training them to do those things, but、uh-huh. they're probably training them to pay attention to languages when they were spoken. And 16 of the dogs were used. To excuse me, they were used to Hungarian. They were familiar with the Hungarian languages, and the other two were used to Spanish. So we've got 16 dogs who've been around Hungarian speakers, and then we've got two other dogs who've been around Spanish speakers. And again, these are trained dogs of various types.、Uh, the types here could be referring to different breeds、yeah. of dogs, like maybe poodles, or an Irish Setter, or an English Sheepdog, or a Boxer. Or a bulldog, or a basenji, or whatever. So they had different types of dogs there, and again, most of them understood. Well, we're used to hearing Hungarian,、mm-hmm. and two others were familiar with Spanish. Right. So different areas of the dog's brains were stimulated when different languages were spoken, depending. This is important on whether the language was familiar or not. So they actually had the、uh, dogs under undergoing these scans as they were、uh, talking to them in different languages, which is kind of fun to see. I love those brain scans where parts of a brain will light up depending on what、uh, they're being asked to think about or do or feel. Even if you stimulate something, you cause it to respond. You can stimulate something by a. Putting pressure on something,、um, I don't know by by、uh, some sort of action. You can encourage someone to、uh, do something, stimulate some their imagination. Teachers will often stimulate students' imaginations in class, get them to be more creative. So they stimulated.、Um, they used the scan to see which areas of the brain were stimulated or started to react to what languages they were hearing. Yep.、Uh, which areas of the brains reacted when different languages were spoken, and of course that depended on whether the language was familiar or not. So if the Hungarian dogs heard Spanish, a different part of their brain would be stimulated, and then if they heard Hungarian, then a different part of their brain, another part of their brain, would be stimulated. So I guess that、uh, kind of tells us that、uh, dogs hear languages in different areas of the brain. And here in the next paragraph, it says. Quaya,、uh, the person who conducted the study, Quaya was particularly interested to learn whether dogs have the intelligence to make distinctions between languages in the same way as human infants.、Uh, that would mean babies, basically.、Mm-hmm. So yes, they wanted to. The people in the study wanted to see if the dogs、uh, distinguish between the languages like infants do. And here we've got the word intelligence. That just re- That just refers to how much you know, or how well you're able to acquire knowledge and to use that knowledge. And a person who has high intelligence is intelligent. Right. So that was kind of fun.、Uh, the research found the answer to be positive. So they do have the intelligence to make distinct. Distinctions, or you could just substitute that with differentiate, right? To make distinct, di- to make distinctions, or to uh, differentiate. Uh, those are synonyms. You can、uh, switch those out.、Uh, they could make distinctions between languages in the same way as little infants. 
So the research found the answer to be positive. Yay! Although older dogs. And those with longer snouts saw the most similarities with humans, so they their reaction was closest to humans. Now, if you have a snout, you have a long nose. We often use it to describe pig pigs' noses.、Mm-hmm. Um, you can use a nose snout. A beak is the nose of a bird, right? Right.、Uh, but on an elephant, it's not a snout; it's a trunk. So we use different words to talk about noses, just as sort of slang and kind of、um, uh, sarcastic. I think name. If someone has a really long, big nose, sometimes we'll we'll say he has he has a big honker.、Mm. Yeah, or you could call call it a snout, but technically it's not a snout. But in any case, a snout is an extension from the skull, and then the nose is on the end of it. Bears have snouts, dogs have snouts, etc., etc. Even sharks have snouts, but people don't. People don't, right? But you can say <laughs> snout just to joke around. Yeah, I'm going to hit you right in the snout.、Uh, you might say that jokingly to someone. So yes, indeed,、uh, it's kind of weird. Dogs with longer snouts seem to understand languages in a similar way. To humans,、mm-hmm. and Quiet believes that older dogs are merely more used to hearing different languages. So older dogs, of course, are better at this. But she thinks, well, it's only because they're used to hearing different languages. Dogs have lived for maybe twelve years, and different people have visited the house before, and maybe they've spoken different languages. So yes, if you're an older dog, you've probably heard different languages. Well, everyone who's lived longer has more experience of the world or in the world, so that isn't surprising.、Uh, Quaya believes that older dogs are merely or only just more used to hearing different languages. So when you use merely, you're emphasizing that something is only what you say and not. Better, more important, or more exciting. I'm merely telling you the truth. Why are you getting mad? I'm only telling you the truth. I'm just telling you the truth.、Mm-hmm. So only and just are very good、uh, synonyms for merely. But you should learn merely. It's a great word. It is certainly a good word. And I suppose that dogs here in Taiwan are exposed to lots of different languages. Of course, they're going to hear Mandarin Chinese. They're going to hear Taiwanese, maybe Hakka, and maybe they'll. Hear some Aboriginal languages. Hey, they're going to hear English in Taiwan. Ah,、uh, right. They'll hear English, <laughs> and if the TV's on, maybe they'll hear Korean coming、yeah. from Korean soap operas,、French. or from Japanese、uh, variety shows, or whatever. So yes, indeed, dogs here in Taiwan probably have brains that are stimulated in a lot of areas. No wonder dogs in Taiwan are so intelligent. So the research does indicate or show us. That's what indicate means. If someone indicates to you, they're you pre- pretty much they're using their hand or their finger to you know to point towards something. They're gesturing, but here it just means it shows、um, in a figurative sense. It shows that all dogs have a certain ability to differentiate languages without training. And as I mentioned before, differentiate is a great verb to use rather than to use the make. A distinction or make distinction.、Um, it's just faster to use one word. So. It's kind of a fun story. You might want to check into that a little bit more. It's interesting, and maybe someday dogs will be able to talk to us. And、uh, of course, if we get lonely without friends or family around, we'll be able to have sparkling conversations with our canine friends. Okay, that brings us to the end of our explanation for today, and it brings us to the end of our lesson for today. The Chinese teacher is actually here, but is not allowed to speak today. No,、uh, we've got the Chinese key- teacher all gagged up and sitting. <laughs> In the room, so yeah, we can't hear from the teacher, but、uh, that does bring us to the end of our of our program. Thanks for joining us from all of us here at English Digest. I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye. Bye.